Um, Dr. Geshwin, uh, thank you for being part of Alzheimer's News Today, official coverage of CONI 16, and to agreeing to this filmed interview. Um, previous attempts by several companies to target beta amyloid in advanced Alzheimer's patients have not succeeded. And however, at least two drugs, uh, gantenerumab and solonezumab, are under study for these targets, but in patients with mild Alzheimer's-related dementia. Do you believe that targeting the disease at earlier stages may prove successful? Um, yes, I think that, I think first of all that amyloid is still a viable target. Uh, more than 30 trials, including mostly immunotherapies, have failed, but most of them have taken patients who are moderate or severe uh, in terms of their disease stage. But if you look at the sub-analyses, particularly at patients who are much earlier in the disease or more mild, those are the patients who seem to have had possibly some benefit. So going toward earlier patients, I think, does make some sense. Not all antibodies will probably be equivalent. In fact, now they're even looking at, in fact, they not only are looking at, but they actually are treating patients who come from genetic families who are at risk for developing Alzheimer's and are getting close to the onset of the disease because the onset in their family is so hom homogenous that they are trying to delay that onset. Um, so, and they're treating patients in the pre-symptomatic phase of the disease. So I think that it is possible to, that these drugs will work, the anti-amyloid, but they just have to be given early. I think the abundance of evidence suggests that it's probably not a very good late target, but perhaps it is a good early target. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it has been so difficult to successfully target the beta amyloid protein in Alzheimer's patients? Is it yeah, so uh, I think, well, the studies have shown that they actually can target the protein. Uh, I think they're getting the antibody into the brain probably less than 2% or even less than 1% gets into the brain, crosses the blood-brain barrier when it's given outside of the brain. Uh, but that probably seems to be enough to reduce the beta amyloid. Though beta amyloid, if you treat it late, doesn't have an effect. You have to treat it early. It's an upstream, it's very upstream in the, uh, in the amyloid cascade um, mm -hmm. process. I think that other treatments, such as for treating the tau, um, might be viable for treating later stage patients. So I'm very excited about those treatments uh, that are coming down the pipeline. Other treatments that aren't amyloid but are looking at, uh, I'm sorry, they are am not immunotherapy against amyloid, but are trying to prevent the accumulation or the development of the amyloid those seem to be a little bit more difficult, mostly because of off-target effects. Um, for gamma secretase, it's the problem that there are too many off-target effects because it affects other proteins like the notch proteins, which are ubiquitously expressed in the body. So you have too many other side effects. And then the beta secretase is a very complex molecule and very difficult to focally target. So but the, I know that companies are actively working on that, so those are other possibilities. But again, they will have to be likely given to early patients. Mm -hmm. I think given late in the disease, moderate to severe, unlikely to be of any benefit. Okay. Um, do you think immunotherapeutic uh, approaches are the future of Alzheimer's treatment? I still think they are going to be, at least for the near future, Though, as I mentioned, I think if they can target beta secretase, uh, that might have uh, equal, if not even better, uh, ability. But again, they're going to have to do it earlier. So I still think there is a place for anti-amyloid therapy. But we should know this pretty soon. With the, Even though the genetic forms of the disease are, dis are di different from the sporadic or the more common spontaneous form, there are enough similarities that if they show an effect in 
presymptomatic patients and delaying the onset of the disease in those patients who are at risk for the genetic form because they carry a genetic mutation, if they can prevent those people from getting the disease when it's expected, that really provide, would provide great hope. And those data should be available in the next few years uh, or sooner. So um, both the study from in Colombia, uh, Francisco Lopera, Ken Cossack's uh, study in Colombia targeting one large genetic cohort, and then the Diane study r run by uh, Randy Bateman and colleagues from Washington University. Um, those two studies really should hopefully be able to provide some fascinating data on this. Okay. Thank you very much.